I'm going to give you the latest numbers. Um, on Monday, Kilme got 2.6 million in the overall. Tucker had been getting 3.2 the previous uh, Monday. Kilme got 294,000 in the key audience demo of 25 to 54 year olds. The previous Monday, Tucker had 445. Tuesday, it got worse. Um, Kilmeade got 1.7 million viewers. Tucker's previous Tuesday, 3.2 million. 3.2. Uh, in the key demo on Tuesday, the 8 p.m. got 149,000 in the key demo. 149,000. Tucker, the previous week, had almost 500,000. He had 481. I mean, we're talking about what, 330,000 loss in the key demo? That's the one they use to run advertising dollars. That's the one they care about. He, he lost. He lost in the demo to CNN and MSNBC. That doesn't happen. That doesn't happen at 8 p.m. on the Fox News channel. Trust me, I was there for almost 20 years. On Wednesday uh, at 8 p.m., this is just shocking to me. They got 1.33 million. That was below the 7 p.m., below the 6 p.m., and compare it with Tucker's the previous week of 3 million, 3 million down to 1.3 million in a week's time. I just, I, like, it's absolutely stunning. In the key demo, the previous week, Tucker had gotten 357,000 in the key audience demo. The 8 p.m. now, 124,000. 124 down from almost 400,000. They lost again to CNN and MSNBC. The 8 p.m. is now losing to Anderson Cooper and Chris Hayes. It doesn't happen. It's never, it doesn't happen unless somebody else has got like live video of an earthquake in process or a car chase in process. That's the only way, progress, that, that the other channels beat Fox. And yet it's happening now. I want to tell you something. Fox News is in a downward spiral that they're going to have to claw to get themselves out of. Just by way of context, right? These numbers overall are so dreadful. We went back and looked back um, at when I was number one in the key audience demo when I was at nine, uh, hosting on Fox News. You know what my demo was in October, uh, right before I left? 641,000. That's what I was getting in the key audience demo, 641,000. They are down at 124,000 right now at the 8 p.m. And this is an existential crisis for the channel in its prime time, which is how they make money. Don't get me wrong. Daytime's nice for news development. You got to keep something on the air. They live off of their prime time. And the food has dried up. Your reaction? Look, I think that this is the first time that um, Fox is having to deal with an audience that because of the way uh, a host has has exited in this case, feels... Um, like their best interests are not being taken into account, right? I think that this is the first time that you've seen, I mean, with the O'Reilly situation, I think it was very different. Um, you know, your situation was very different. And everyone that I talked to on this issue, it says kind of the same thing, which is one, we have no explanation for like no official explanation. I know there's all these different news stories about it. Um, but it feels like this was a, a decision that came very suddenly and that the audience wasn't really a factor. And I think when you break that bond with the people who are supposed to be watching, consuming your content, and when all of a sudden it feels like decisions are being made that are not in their best interests, um, uh, but actually some kind of personality conflict maybe at the top of the organization, uh, that's, that's a huge challenge. Also, Tucker gave legitimacy to much of the rest of the Fox primetime lineup, I think, in terms of being willing to, he was the guy who was willing to run into uh, issues uh, that were, you know, too hot to handle. I mean, he was the guy who was willing to actually, I think, push the envelope. And that meant that there are people like me, I used to watch Tucker every night. Like, I'll, I'll say that openly, I would watch his monologue um, I do three hours of radio a day. Some days I'll do an additional podcast, right? Megan, you know what it's like. I'll do many hours of my own content. I have almost no time to consume anyone else's content. But Tucker's monologue, I would make a point uh, to, to watch it when I could. And now that's not even on my radar anymore. So people like me, for example, we're not going to get there early and maybe catch more of Jesse's show. We're not going to get there later or stay later and, and you know, watch more of Sean's show. Fox has just fallen off of our radar. If you were if you were coming for Tucker's monologue 
Now your reason for turning on that primetime channel is uh, that, that channel of primetime feels like it's faded away. I don't know how they can turn this around. I, look, I, I think they have to bring Tucker back, quite honestly. That's where I, I don't know what they think is going to happen here. That would be the you smart know, move. Like, right. I mean, I, I think that's what has to happen here because, first of all, I mean, you know, Brian killed me. You, you know, Brian. Brian is a super nice guy. And he I is love being Brian. I feel, I know. Brian is such a good dude, and he's being put in such a tough spot here. It's not and his I, fault. I, no, right. Oh, totally, it's not. It's like they totally. found their most likable personality and put him in the spot, sort of saying, You'll watch Brian, right? You like Brian? This isn't about Brian. This is the audience with the double barrel middle finger saying, You can F right off, Fox News. We don't care who you put there. Where's Tucker? I mean, I'll, I'll tell you just from, from my own experience, right? Um, stepping in for. There, there are really, two, you know, there, there's prime time at Fox and there's being on one of like the big four radio shows. But really the biggest, obviously, was was Rush Limbaugh for for over 30 years. And and when Rush passed, there was this understanding with the audience that they're again, what I was saying before about their interests, that relationship, that bond that Rush had with that audience was so respected, was so respected by um, by Premier, um, by iHeart. Uh, and just just everybody involved that the decision was made. Look, we're just going to have people come. We're doing effectively a tribute to Rush. They did a tribute to Rush, pl- pulling his some you know some of his best stuff for months, for months. And that was done in, that was done intentionally just to say, look, we're we want all of you to know that Rush was the greatest that's ever done this. And and then the the decision came along. People said, well, why is it like the Clay and Buck show? Why are there two of you? I mean, the joke I always make is that Rush's shoes were too big to fill, so that they put you know. Clay in one shoe and me in the other, and oh. you know we're we're running as fast as we can in it. And I think the audience knows that we have that level of respect for Rush and what he did. But what I'm saying is that there was this this real plan to transition and this understanding of no one's filling Rush's shoes, but we're going to try to serve this audience anyway. So that audience felt respected. Megan, right now the 8 p.m. Fox audience, and I know because I'm one of them, and I and I talk to so many people who are. They feel disrespected. They're like, well, what do you mean you're taking our guy off the air? For what? They haven't even told anybody for what yet. I think they have to bring Tucker back. I think short of that, this is not a uh, this is not an issue that can be can be easily fixed. And you know, when when there were when you departed, Bill departed, there was the Trump wave that happened, right? The Trump he phenomenon. Saved them. Yeah. It, the Trump phenomenon. I mean, I mean, honestly, all you had to do was sort of get on TV and cover Trump and be like, wow, this is kind of an amazing political reality we've got here. And it was yeah. just like, boom, right? That's not there anymore. And it's not going to be there even if Trump, I think, wins the primary because it's just a different attitude and a different time. So I, I think that I, for the first time, Fox, to me, is in an existential crisis when it comes to viewers. I've And I've been watching Fox since I was in high school. I agree with you 100%. I, I used to laugh that those big numbers I was getting at nine, I was very proud of them. I got those during the Obama years. The Obama years, Buck. <laughs> okay? You, you it wasn't during this... the Trump cup run over years. It was yeah. hard to put points on the board back then. The man was nine times out of 10 quite boring. Not as boring as Joe Biden, but he was a bore compared to Trump. But in any event, they. so you're right. Not only do they is Trump not going to be quite as exciting this time around, even if he gets it? But Fox has turned on Trump. Maybe the Murdochs will eventually say, okay, we'll submit and we'll go along with him if he becomes the GOP nominee. But very clearly, they've turned on him. 